Okay, I got on a little bit early this morning because I'm bringing a guest in and I want to make sure that he gets a chance to see this and gets in early so I can invite him in. So uh, as Facebook builds a little audience here, got a couple of things I want to share with you. Uh, I think you'll find really interesting. I'm excited about having Brandon LaForest on with me today. I know that you're going to enjoy this little interview um, with him. Uh, so good morning, Walter. Good to have you on. And I will be sharing some really cool stuff with you from uh, from this little this little interview today with with Brandon LaForest. Let's see if we can get Brandon on here. We got to make sure that we can get him in. Let's see. Uh, waiting for Brandon to join us. So I see Jeremy and Wesley and Eric and Doug and Walt and so let's see here we've got to make sure we get Brandon in uh, so that he can be a part of this conversation this morning because I'm looking forward to it um, Brandon is an interesting an interesting character that I had taught uh, several years ago so I want to share this this experience with you here let's see we should have uh, Brandon on so give me a second let me see if I can find him here um, I'll make sure that he is here. Okay, done that. Now, let's see. Good morning, George, Holly, Connie. We've got a nice crowd today. Jason Hodge, good to have you all joining me today. And uh, give me just a second. I'm trying to get my guest, Brandon, on. And you'll be glad that you got a chance to hear this. Brandon uh, is a good friend from, um, from days gone by. So... Brandon, you got to jump in here so I can see you. Leslie, uh, so many of you joining me this morning. I know you're looking forward to this. Let's see if we can get uh, Brandon in here. And there's Vicki. My normal crowd is here, so uh, really glad to see you on. But let's see if we can get J Brandon in here. We're having a problem uh, getting Brandon on this morning. Let's see what's going on here. Told him he had to be on his iPhone. So Brandon, make sure you're on your iPhone. Walter said, good morning, morning. Okay, good. Betty, you made it. I told you I fixed your phone for you so that you'd be able to get on. Good to have you on this morning and Holly and so many of you joining and I'm trying to get my guest on here. So hang on a second. We're trying to find him. Let's see if we can get, uh, send him a special invitation. Uh, let's see here. I don't know where he's at. I'll give you a little bit of background as we wait for Brandon to come on. Uh, he's going to have to jump in here. I told him it would be straight up 9 o'clock, and so we should be right there. All right, let me give you a little background. I told you this story several months ago and that I had um, been training a young man in Michigan. And, um, and I, I saw something that I thought would be helpful to him. I was in, yeah, I'm going to explain the orange shirt at, a, at either today or at another time. Uh, you'll see me a lot in this orange shirt, and I'm about to reveal uh, why I wear this orange shirt. I'm getting close. I'm not ready yet. I'm a couple of weeks away from being able to tell you why I wear this orange shirt as frequently as I do. If you were on my Change the World webinar, you'll know why I wear the orange shirt. But... Um, but I will get to that, uh, Walter, if not today, at another time. Still waiting to see if Brandon's got uh, in here to join us yet. Let's see here. Um, Brandon, if you're there, you got to let me know what's going on so I can, I can see you. Um, uh, we're just watching here. Okay. Brandon was a young man I had trained in Michigan. Uh, he was an insurance sales rep, and I... I, I, I had an opportunity to work with him, and I saw something. I saw something in um, the the Michigan Business Journal that I thought would be helpful to him. So I sent him a link to the article by text message, which we did that all the time. All the time we did that, and it was in the middle of the winter. Sent him a text message. Sent it to him at a particular time in the morning, and I don't hear back from him. Which was unusual because I normally heard back from him, you know, within within an hour or so, whatever. I uh, usually hear back from him. I didn't hear back from him. I didn't hear back from him all day. And that evening, I got a 
phone call from the office assistant who said he'd been involved in a horrible accident. A horrible accident. Brandon, if you're on, let me know you're here because I, I, I want I want this story to I want this story to get out, and uh, it's important that people hear this. Brandon was involved in a horrible accident, and all I knew was that the person that 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 the accident was the result of text messaging. Well, you can imagine how I felt. I'd sent him a text message. Happened at the time that I had sent him the text message, and. Brandon was unable to respond. He was in a coma. And uh, there we go, Brandon. Okay, let's see if I can get you in here. Uh, let's jump in. All right, I've got him invited. Let's see if we can get him in here. So, Brandon, you have to respond to the invitation. You should be able to do that this morning. I see that the invitation's there, so hang on. Uh, you should be, should be able to join me here in just a second. Okay, if not, I'll try again. Um, but you have to respond to the invite. And that should let you right in. Okay, um, because I want to finish this story of Brandon on, I really do. Got to be in a place where you got a good signal, Brandon, so you can join us. Uh, there we go. There hey, we go. hey, Brandon. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Can can you hear me all right? I'm you're a little low, so all right, good. All right, okay. You seem a little bit low to me, but then I have a lot of background noise, and that's my fault because of where I'm at. Um, okay. Sure. Hang on one second. Let me get to a chair so I can sit down here. Okay. Sorry. Not a problem. Not a problem. Actually, glad to see you out and about, mobile. That's that's the good thing. I was just telling the story. I don't know how far you got into the story here that I was talking about uh, when I was telling the story about how that um, I had sent you the text message. That's where I was at. I sent you a text message. You were involved in the accident. And so I'm going to finish that part of the story because that's my part of the story. Um, it, it's not very important, but it's my part of the story. And uh, while Brandon finds a place to sit down, I'm going to share with you what happened next. For three months, Brandon was unable to respond, and I'm, I'm, and it may be longer than that, but I, I, the whole time I felt like maybe I sent him a text message at the wrong time, and I felt horribly guilty for the accident that he was involved in. And I, 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 I did. I couldn't sleep at night, and because I thought that was my fault. And so I, I've told y'all before that if I know you're driving, you will not get a text message from me. I, I just, you're, I, I'm not going to do it. Uh, because I learned my lesson with what happened with Brandon. And then come to find out it wasn't me. But, Brandon, you pick up the story from there and tell us a little bit about what happened to you, because I think this is important for our, our listeners to hear. Yeah, I was um, – I personally – I'll start with saying this. I don't – I have a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, um, from this accident that I was going to – that I'm going to tell you guys about um, – so I don't physically remember the accident itself, but I was apparently stopped on the expressway um, for an accident that was in front of me, and um, I was slowing to about five miles per hour, is what the police report said. And someone hit me from behind at 80 miles per hour, and um, then pushed my car in the next one where I got hit on the passenger side going 70 miles per hour and then hit from the rear again. Um, now, the original car that hit me, um, the reason she hit me is because she was texting and not paying attention. And that is how Eric thought. He, he At first, when he heard it was due to texting while driving, he thought I was responding to a text from him. And thank God that wasn't the case. Um, but it was the female driver behind me that was texting that was the cause of the accident. And I had passed away on the scene, and a nurse in her car um, came to my vehicle and revived me on the scene. And then when the paramedics got there, they um, revived me three more times on the way to the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, they did emergency brain surgery. Um, and when my family got there, um, they told my mom and uh, dad that 
uh, I had the worst brain injury someone uh, can sustain, that they did not expect me to live through the night, and that if I did, it was a 2% chance, and I would be a complete vegetable if I did live. And by the grace of God, I've, I'm, I've made it a lot farther than uh, most of the doctors uh, ever expected. And, um, you know, I, I uh, you know, just thank, thank God for every day that I have. You know, I'm still in therapies right now. Um, I am in uh, vocational therapy, which is helping me get back to work. And I've started a... a like a almost like a nonprofit. Um, it's called Heads Up, Phones Down, where I go to high schools and um, colleges and talk to the students about the dangers of texting while driving. And um, I do that. And then, but how I met Eric originally, um, he worked for Colonial Life, and I worked for Colonial Life. Uh, and he helped. Uh, he was a trainer, and uh, I tell you what, he helped me. Uh, be very successful at Clone Life, and uh, I, I, at the time of my accident, I was a district manager, and I, from the time I got promoted from a, a assistant district manager to a district manager, I had hit every single one of my quarters, uh, and I think that in large part to Eric, because, uh, you know, he was always there for me when I had a question, I was able to call him and um, get good answers and, and get good feedback, and uh, Eric always got a lot of good suggestions and, and got good answers and makes you think, uh, that, and, and that's a good thing. You know, he just doesn't give you an answer and, and hang up the phone. You know, he makes you really think, and, and that's a good thing. Well, I want to I want to take that just a little bit. I want to go backwards and then forwards just a little bit from the accident because I think okay. it's important that people understand what's happened. We were pretty close. I mean, we, we talked – uh, every week, every and sometimes f- more frequently than that, I made multiple trips to Michigan to work with Brandon. He was incredibly successful. Brandon was one of my biggest success stories, and um, and I was quite proud of what what Brandon was doing. I had recommended him for a number of things, and and it, there was a great opportunity. When I finally got a chance to call him, when he had finally gotten permission to talk, uh, I, I talked to him. He was in rehab. He didn't know who I was, and I was never so crushed in my life as here's somebody that I felt really, really close to, who I'm trying to talk to on the phone, and I, I know you don't remember that, Brandon. That was probably after seven or eight months, and uh, and, and you didn't know who I was, and, and I was just devastated by that, and I would send you a text message, and you'd say, remind me again, who are you? And, and, you know, it, I, I think we need to understand that while we see Brandon sitting here and, and sharing with us and being very articulate in what, he, what he's talking about, and he talked about his traumatic brain injury, that was how many years ago, Brandon? Uh, that was October 5th of 2010. Yeah. And um, what, what was affected for me most was my short-term memory. And... Um, remembering the names of people was one of the areas of my brain that was extremely uh, affected. Um, I uh, remember like growing up people's names in high school, stuff like that, but um, around the time of my accident, it, it was very, you know, uh, foggy for me. Um, and remembering the names of things, how my brain injury was affecting me, like um, let's say for example, I, I remember after my accident wanting ketchup for some food that I wanted and being in a brain injury recovery center. I was in a coma for a month after my accident. And the, the, at the hospital, they, the, first they said after two weeks, if, if, you're, if the patient's in a coma for more than two weeks, the chances of the patient coming out of a coma are, you know, get less and less. Yeah. So I was in a coma for a month. And as soon as I came out of the coma, they rushed me to a brain injury recovery center. And when I was there, and I remember the accident happened on October 5th of 2010. I remember waking up about a week and a half before Christmas. So there's a period of there for about, you know, two and a half months. I don't remember anything at all. And yeah. I hear stories of what happened in those two and a half months, um, you know, after I recovered out of the coma. 
of things I did. I mean, you, you basically go back to an infant like state and, and you progress up to a first grader, second grader, you know, you, you just go back to childhood stages. And I mean, where I was doing things that, you know, an adult would never do, like running around naked, keep taking your clothes off and running around naked as an adult in, in, in the brain injury recovery center. I mean, that's not something yeah. you do as an adult. But anyway, when I was there, I had to learn how to spell again and, and remember the names of things. And I wanted ketchup for my food. I could see it in my head what the ketchup looked like, but I couldn't find the words to what that item was. And I still have that issue now to today where I, I want something and I, and I can't find the words. And it's so frustrating. Um, and, but you know what? I, I, I try to use the resources I have around me to my phone, um, my computer, um, the people around me, um, uh, my you know family, friends, and I'll explain to them, you know, what it is I'm trying to get out in my head, and, uh, and alarms on my phone, for instance, because I'm remembering to take my medicines every day, guys. I wasn't on one, not one pill before my accident. You know, I know how many pills I have to take every day now. I'm on 26 medications right now. Wow. Wow. I take every day after my accident. Um, and I have alarms that go off on my phone all day that go off and says medication to help me remind me to take down my medication. If you, Eric, were to say, hey, Brandon, call me at 9 o'clock tonight. I got to talk to you about a webinar I'm going to do on Friday. I would have to set an alarm at, like, 845 to say, call Eric at 9, you yeah. know, to call you. That's my yeah, story. that's I've watched you go through that recovery. Pro I haven't watched because I haven't been there, but 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 we've been in close contact for a long time. Um, once you were able to remember, we I remember how excited I was. I, I, I the first time I talked to you and you remembered me, you remembered who I was. We had a we had a conversation. First time I did that, it's like oh thank God we're finally able to communicate, and and I knew that connection was being made. And then, you know, you called me last week and said, let's do this live feed together. And I said, that would be a cool idea. I really want people to hear your story. I want them to see that the, the progress that's been made from the recovery. But this, there's two sides to this. One is we're so glad to see you where you're at. I mean, really, to, to, to be able to sit here and articulate what you've done. No, nobody understands the progress that that, 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 that demonstrates. Um, you've done a good job of explaining where you're at. But man, I tell you what, I that was seven years ago, and I sat on the other side of this and tried to try to catch up, and it's like, oh, I, I, finally glad that we and that was that was a couple of years into the process before there was really good stuff that was going on, but that's the good side of it. The bad side is that this all could have been eliminated. All that had to happen was for somebody to wait till they stopped to look at that text message. Yep. That's all had to happen. Yep. You know, all of all of what's gone through, and that's the reason why Brandon does the heads up, phones down thing, which is an amazing which is an amazing opportunity to be able to share with other people the danger of texting while you're driving. And I've kind of been on a rampage about that ever since that happened with you. And and you've inspired me to share this story before. I've shared it a couple of times. I did it uh, uh, in Facebook, and then I did a Facebook Live about it several months ago. And many of the people on this call will remember that Facebook Live that, that I did when I shared your story. And it was very, very popular. Lots of people commented on that. So I wanted to have you on today and let them hear from you what has happened uh, as you've gone through this process. Um, Brandon, let's see. Let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Um, uh, we need to do something to kind of help you with the heads up, phones down. Uh, and and um, I'm not exactly sure what to do. Uh, so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, say if anybody's interested in hearing more about what Brandon's doing, uh, any, any people that, that are connected with me, just send me a private message and then I'll filter that into Brandon. Okay? All right. That way you'll know where it's coming from. It'll, it, it'll make sense. And, and I know that there won't be a kook in there someplace. So uh, just send me, a, if you want to know how you might be able to help Brandon with his heads up, phones down, 
uh, be able to to uh, maybe you want to maybe maybe you're in Michigan. I mean, Ray was on and Ray's in Michigan. Maybe you know somebody that could that could benefit from from Brandon coming to speak. Uh, Brandon is a phenomenal speaker. He's very very encouraging, and um, uh, that's why I do it too. Uh, speaking engagements because I, I try to motivate people that are in a tough place in life. Yes. Uh, and, and medical conditions, and you know, don't give up because so many doctors told me I wasn't going to walk again. I wasn't going to do this. I, I wasn't going to go back to work again. I wasn't going to do this. You know, I wasn't going to drive again. You know what? They told my mom I had a two percent chance of making it. I was going to be a vegetable, and look where I'm at today. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Someone tells you you can't do something. Well, you know what? You t- you take their advice, and you won't do something. And then, but you know what? Don't take their advice and see what what happens. You know, yep. uh, somebody, I wouldn't make it at in the life and I took Eric's help and, and, and my resources and took advantage of my resources around me and, and became successful and that's what I do today and try to you know be successful in life today. We've been talking about dreams all week and how that you have this dream of where you're going to go, what you want to be, what you, how you're going to accomplish that and, and you're a great example of what happens when the dream just becomes a nightmare and, and then you, you dream again. You know, and and uh, so I really, really appreciate you coming on today, Brandon. I think this has been helpful to the audience. I know that if you if y'all like this, give me a little love and some likes in the in, in the uh, in, in the chat here, and let me know that this has been helpful to you. Uh, with that, I'm gonna have to sign out because I try to keep okay. these really brief, and I got some things that I need to take care of this morning. So right there. Uh, let's do that. But thank you so much for joining me, Brandon. I appreciate it. And uh, you all, if you're interested in seeing what you might be able to do to help or having Brandon come to speak, make sure to send me a private message. Meantime, love you all. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Brandon, for sharing your story with us. Have me on, Eric. Have a great day. You too, bye.